Hi, this is Lauren from LSP Actions and welcome to the Fur Babies Photoshop Actions video tutorial number two. In this video tutorial, I'm going to give you an overview of how Fur Babies works and how to get started demonstrating with this gorgeous studio image shot by Amanda Vaughan. If you're not sure how to install the actions and get started, please do watch video one and you, for all the other kind of more in-depth going through each base by base and brush by brush, you can watch the other video tutorials and recipe guides. So let's get started. The Fur Babies actions are loaded in here and they are on button mode. So I'd always recommend starting with the image balance base section here. These are not brushes, they will ply out and affect the whole image. So for example, Magic Image Balance is a really great one to start with. This is an intelligent action. It plays out a few layers for you and will instantly balance, um, balance your image like this. You can turn the action on or off to see the difference. You can see the toning, um, the shadows, everything has been rescued there if we turn that on or off. And with all of the image balances, you can grab the opacity here and you can turn it up or down to suit your image and to make it even further. You can also go ahead and open these groups up and change the, uh, the layers within if you want to, but you'll probably find you don't have to. So let's just lift that up until this image looks a lot more balanced. And what else do we need to use? We don't need to use any of these, I don't think. Perhaps warmer scene, just to warm up this image a little bit more. Though I may turn that one down just a touch. So now we're onto the brush section here. In video one, I showed you how to set your brush up. Basically, it needs to be normal, 100% opacity, and 25% flow. Oh, by the way, if you can't see your layers here, you need to see your layers panel. Come up to window and just hit layers so your layers can appear and they'll look a little bit like mine. If the icons are too small or too big, you can come up here onto panel options and choose the size of your, um, of your thumbnail layers here. Everything at LSP has layer masks attached. These are like Lotto scratch cards, so you can paint black to hide and white to show. For the image balances, this doesn't matter too much, although a black brush will be selected for you that you can use if you need to to paint this off anywhere, though you probably find you won't have to. So let's get on for the brushes here. How about we use Brighten Areas brush to begin with, um, just because I want to brighten up this little guy's face here a little bit, just so they're both a little bit more balanced. You can see how I'm just painting the brush over his face, just to balance up. A white brush is automatically selected for you, but you can switch over to a black brush here and paint the effect off anywhere if you need to. Well, let me zoom in a little bit here. So we can see these sweet little faces. So next up, um, I'm perhaps going to use Tack Sharp, and I'm going to use this just to sharpen up. Just take the brush smaller with the bracket keys here. Those noses and the eyes, just to bring the attention into the face there. You see there, before and after, you can see that's just brought the detail out there. I think I may use the bright eyes brush too. I can use the bracket key to take this down nice and small. I'm just going to paint this on here. Just brighten up these little peepers a little bit. Just the same with human subjects, with animals, you really want to make those features pop. You see there, we just pop the eyes out a little bit more. Now we're onto the mucky pup section here. As always, just these brushes that I've used are just for this image. You have a huge selection here. You can decide which eyes, um, which eyes, which brushes you want to use for your image. You see here, we have a few little bits and bobs um, around the face. So I'm going to use the clean up brush here. I'm just going to use this to paint over any of these little areas we want to kind of get rid of. And you'll see there, it doesn't damage the integrity of the image, just gets rid of these little, um, kind of little scruffy bits and pops. See there, before and after. So we just got rid of those. Let me use that a little bit here on this guy too. And this just instantly will get rid of any of these kind of snaggy bits, little bits of fluff, little bits of old food that are kind of caught there in the muzzles. The eye bait and beard stain cleanup is really good for paler coloured dogs as well. 
that on because it will get rid of some of this yellow toning. Now I'm more than aware that this little doggy here, I think that is some natural tone going on there. It's a mix of both, so I'm just going to lightly use this just to lift and lighten rather than fully removing um, the beard stain there. I'll use a black brush to bring that shadow back in. Next up we have the tonal brushes. Um, I'm going to use the Add Warmth brush, I think, because you can see there's a slight purple toning left on the fur here, so I'm just going to pop that over and warm them up a little bit there, and then possibly change this opacity just a little bit. You also have snapshot and flatten options in full Photoshop, you do not have this one in Elements. And what this will do is take a snapshot of where you are right now and flatten it down. And then in your history panel, you can go up here and you will see the snapshot there. So we have opened image and snapshot one where we've edited to so far. So that's a great way of keeping, um, keeping your image kind of neat and tidy in the layers panel. Now we have the hide action here. I'm going to use this to hide these areas of the background. Um, and get rid of them here. It's a studio image, you can see, um, but this also works for leashes, harnesses, collars, distractions, leaves, hands, anything you don't want in the image. Um, and you can watch the full video tutorial there for a little bit more info on how to use this one. Let's come up onto your spot healing um, brush and choose patch. And then draw around anywhere you want to get rid of and play the selective thing. Oh, first you need to set up the layer because um, this will create a different layer for you. And then just play the select and fix, and what this will do, it will figure out intelligently what you want to do. So you can see there it's just got rid of that area. Let me just, so we can see here, we have that studio background, play select and fix, and it has vanished. And I'm going to do the same for this area, so just draw around it first. Make sure you make your selection first, otherwise the action will not know what to do. And then play select and fix. And it's done. You can also hold down shift um, and grab a few areas at once that you want to fix and place select and fix and it will remove and fix those areas for you. So let me get rid of brightness and contrast now. So we see that before and after, we've just fixed those areas. I'm just going to use that, just uh, put a little bit more of a textured area there. Patch tool is really, really great. You can just drag it to a similar area and it will automatically replace it for you. So now we're down to the uh, Lartis brushes here. We have Entire Enhance and Intention Grab Brush. This one is brilliant. I'll show you what it does. So you just play this one out. This darkens your whole image down. The message says using a soft black brush will paint the effect off your subject's face or anywhere you don't want it to show. Black brush has already been selected intelligently for you. So I'm just going to use this to paint off. And you can see this has darkened the background down. And you can paint it off of your subjects just to really enhance the attention there. Beautiful. Now we have Ultra Details Brush. This is good if you're going to go for a very painterly edit. That's what this section is about. So I'm just going to lightly brush this one over, bring those details out, and the painterly silky fuzz just absolutely beautiful. So I'll just click that to play it out, and you can see it's set the layer up. Just paint this on. What a beautiful effect. Because your brush is on a low flow, you can just simply paint and paint and paint, hovering over until you're happy with the strength. And you can always switch to a black brush to hide it off certain areas or change the opacity of the actual action you've just played. If you play an action out that you don't want to appear anymore, you can simply grab it and bring it into trash like that or turn the eye icon off. So you can see there before and after using the um, silky fur and the ultra details. They've really brought every little hair and detail out. I'm going to play select and fix it. Um, oh, that's what happens if you hit select and fix it accidentally without um, making selection first. I'm going to play the setup layer, grab the patch tool, and I'm just going to get rid of um, some of these little bits here. You see we have a little bit of wetness around the mouth. So I'm just going to fix, and because you're on patch tool as well, you can also just drag those out of the way. It's best to work on, unless you have a very obvious area such as your background, it's best to work on small areas uh, with this action if you can, just to tidy places up. 
Select and Fix is also linked to the F4 shortcut here, so you can hit F4 on the keyboard and it will play automatically. So you don't even have to have the action open, you don't even have to have it near, it is linked automatically to F4 um, for fair babies. For Signature Newborn it's linked to F2. Hazy Halo, uh, this is more for your outdoor images, but I'm just going to show you what it does. So hit V or the Move tool up here, and you can drag this little Hazy Halo anywhere you'd like it to be. Click the layer mask and paint off of your subjects using the brush tool. It's really cute and really easy if you wanted to get that beautiful background haze. It does it instantly for you. But for this image, I really don't think we need it, so I'm going to drag it down to trash. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the snapshot and flatten option there. And now we're down to the diffuse finishes. You have warm mix, cool mix, dreamy mix and drama mix. I think I'm going to play all of the warm mix here. You can either play them individually or play all and it will all set up for you. They'll all be turned off so you can simply turn them on and off and mix and match to suit your final image. Um, this is where your signature kind of artistic style really comes into it. You simply get a little message here, turn each diffuser off, um, on or off to see the effect. And you'll see here they are all off. You need the eye icon to see. So we have Sunset Glow, Peachy Pie, Epiphany, Radiant, and Beam. I think for this one I'm definitely going to use Radiant, so let's turn that one on. And you can adjust the strength here suit your image, so let's go for about there. I don't think I'm going to use any of the other warm ones, so you can simply select these and drag them into trash or leave them off. I try perhaps a darker one, such as evening, and the drum makes evening really darken down. And you can always use a black brush to paint this away from any areas there, so I'm just going to take that opacity down for evening. And perhaps Radiant too. And I'm going to use the black brush, which has already been selected, make it nice and big, and just paint this off the middle there. I think I'm going to knit back up. And the great thing about this, you can hop about the place to the brushes and um, use the gentle darken brush here, just to darken along the bottom. we really want those little subjects to pop. So let's snapshot and flatten this and see how far we've gone. So this is where we started. The basic brushes and balancing, fixing the background and adding the L'Artiste enhancements, and then the diffuse finishes. So there we have before and after. You can see that's a real painterly edit that has transformed the image. But of course, um, you could give 10 photographers this image in Fur Babies and you would get 10 completely different edits back again because everything is so versatile to your own tastes. And everyone's tastes are a little bit different. That's what makes your style your own. Now down here we have the final touches section. Contrast boost, final kick, that will just add that tiny little bit of extra contrast. Again, you can slide this up or down. Add a soft vignette, this will darken those edges in a really soft way. With a black brush selected for you, so you can paint this off or on even more if you want to, so I'm just painting that off a little. Convert for black and white, this will make a nice black and white conversion, so you can save an alternative version there for black and white. This gives you a really juicy black and white, it's not just a grey scale, this gives you um, a beautiful, beautiful black and white every single time. And you also have sharpen for print um, if you want to sharpen your whole image up. Just zoom in a little bit. It will give you kind of what it feels is the optimum standard, but you can turn this down and turn it up um, depending. So you can add that final kick of sharpness in there. And then we have the Facebook resizes, Facebook landscape, portrait you have fast, the elegant frame version, Instagram website and sRGB. So what these do, basically, they will make a new version of your image. You can go ahead and save this as the full-size version. And then um, down here, if you want to create a Facebook version, you can click it here. This will literally resize for Facebook. It will open up your folders to save. 
um, but if you want to turn um, add a, a your watermark, you can go File, Place Embedded, and add your watermark in, and then you can save. When it comes to saving for Facebook and web, I like to use the File, um, Export, and Save for Web. Choose JPEG. Don't worry about the size, it's already optimised for you, and hit Save. And what this will do, it will optimise even more for web. Um, web viewings, that goes for Facebook, Instagram, and your website. Use the Save for Web option rather than Save As, and you'll get an even um, higher quality image when it goes to sharing online. Client images, you may want to make sure that you are um, on sRGB rather than, say, Pro Photo or Adobe RGB for saving for clients. This isn't available on Element Elements, it's only available on full Photoshop. You can use the sRGB. It won't seem to do anything, but what it's done is actually converted to the sRGB profile for you. So you know when you save that client image, they're getting it in the best um, optimal viewing format there. So that is a basic overview of how to use fur babies. You can watch the other video tutorials for more tailored edits for outdoors, um, completely different subjects and uh, different combinations of the actions. You can also visit the website at www.lsp-actions.com um, to see all the user FAQs about Photoshop actions and everything else there um, to really help you get the best out of fur babies. So enjoy the other video tutorials. I'm Lauren. Thanks for watching.